like to welcome you this morning to our morning worship service here at the Mount Carmel Church. I'd also like to say Happy Mother's Day to all those that are watching and listening this morning. I just want to say thank you for all that you've done and, and all that you've done in our lives and the many influences that you have in our lives. And maybe you're watching today and maybe you're not a mother but you're a guardian or maybe you're an aunt that, that has had different ones come into your life. I just want to say thank you again for all that uh, mothers, guardians, aunts, uh, friends have done for us and the influence they can be on our lives. But how important it is as we think of Mother's Day and think about being a godly mother or a godly wife. And uh, as we look at the passages of Scripture this morning in our study, we'll see a very special mom and some of the things that she did. But again, I want to say Happy Mother's Day. Let's open in a word of prayer this morning as we open our service, and uh, just take some time today. If your mother's no longer uh, living, uh, just think of some of the things that she may have taught you, some of the things that she may have uh, instilled in your life, and how that in our lives we can be a legacy, the same as maybe a mom or a grandmother in your life, or maybe a guardian. Or maybe a relative that raised you. You know how important it is in our lives in those first few years to be nurtured and to uh, realize and understand who God can be in our lives. Let's have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this day that we call Mother's Day. Dear Lord, I just praise you for the mothers that are out there. And the mothers come in, in all different ways, Lord. They may be our, our biological mother, or they may be our adopted mother, or they may be someone that has raised us over the years, or maybe it's a grandmother, maybe it's an aunt, maybe it's someone in our life, dear Lord, that, that has that mother figure. Dear Lord, we just thank you for those that have influenced our lives. We thank you for the many blessings that they have been. And dear Lord, we also pray for those that may be thinking right now, well, my life wasn't that good. Dear Lord, I, I pray for that person that, that Mother's Day comes along and it becomes a very tough day. We just ask for your guidance in their lives. And dear Lord, how that today we're talking about godly women. Dear Lord, and that comes from mothers to wives to guardians to... All, in all kinds of ways. Dear Lord, we think of the, the influences that they've made in our lives and, and many times the legacies that they have left in our lives. We thank you for our time together today. We just pray for our, our service this morning. We ask for continued guidance and direction. And dear Lord, I pray for each and every lady out there watching today that no matter where they are no matter who they are. The first and most important thing is to have a personal relationship with you. To have faith and trust in who you are and who you can be in their lives, but then to go from that point to, to being a godly mother, a godly influence in, in someone that you have placed in their lives life. Dear Lord, we just thank you for the mothers today that have went on before us. Dear Lord, we think of, of many that uh, can look back and think of great things that their mothers have done or a person that maybe has raised them has done. And dear Lord, we just thank you for that. We just pray, dear Lord, today as we look at your word and a very special mom and some of the ways that she looked at, at uh, just continuing to, to walk and to trust. Dear Lord, I pray that we would also do that. But we thank you for mothers today and this day that we call Mother's Day. Dear Lord, that it would be a day that we would just rejoice and thank you for those that have been in our lives to influence us in a very special way. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning as we start each and every week, we have a verse of the month that we like to use and 
This month is called is found in John chapter 16, verse 33. So if you'd follow along, and just uh, if you'd say it with me, uh, maybe you have somebody watching or listening with you, ask them to say it with you, but it's John 16, 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. A great verse for us to think about and as we sing our song for the, the morning and as we think about how that Jesus paid it all. He paid it all for each and every one of us. We just came through Easter where we saw that the crucifixion, we saw Jesus dying on a cross for each and every one of us. And what a glorious day that is, that shed blood that was shed for us for forgiveness of our sins. But how that we serve a risen Savior because three days later He defeated death and someday is coming back for us. But Jesus paid it all. Let's all sing. If you have somebody with you, I encourage them to sing along with you. But the song is Jesus Paid It All.
I hope that you sang along with our song this morning, Jesus Paid It All, because He did pay it all for each and every one of us. This morning on this Mother's Day, we want to look at a, a very special mother. And I've entitled the message this morning, By Faith. You know, by faith, this lady trusted Christ in what she did. So if you have your Bibles this morning, please turn to Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2, we're going to be looking at a few verses here in Exodus chapter 2, starting in verses 1 and going through verse 10. You know, through the action of faith, Moses' mom prepared the future deliverer of Israel for his task. And by faith, she protected him. She did a lot to him, but she had faith in who Christ was. And as we think of this Mother's Day, I, I cannot help but think of a, a illustration, a little story that I once heard. There was a little boy, and he forgot his lines in a Sunday school presentation. Well, his mother was in the front row to prompt him on, so she, she gestured and she formed the words silently with her lips. But it didn't help anything. He still couldn't remember it. Her son's memory was completely blank. And maybe you've been in those situations where your memory becomes blank. But her son's memory was blank. And he, he all of a sudden got kind of stage fright because he really couldn't think of what he was going to say. Finally, his mom leaned forward in the front seat and whispered the words that he needed to say. I am the light of the world. Well, the, the child then heard that, and the child beamed, and with great feeling in a loud, clear voice said his line, My mother is the light of the world. <laughs> you know, he heard it from his mom. And we see a, a, an example of who his mom was. We know that Christ is the light of the world. But in his eyes, his mom was the light of the world. You know, I ran across a poem about mothers, and it goes like this. God took the fragrance of a flower, the majesty of a tree, the gentleness of morning dew, the calm of a quiet sea, the beauty of the twilight hour, the soul of a starry night, the laughter of a rippling brook, the grace of a bird in flight, then God fashioned from these things a creation like no other. And when his masterpiece was through, he called it simply Mother. Now that we can praise God for the mothers in our lives, or those that God placed in our lives to give us a very godly influence. This morning as we look at Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, and I, I want to read those this morning. We want to examine the faith of Moses' mother. And consider how her life might support the mothers we want to honor today. So if you follow along in Exodus chapter 2, reading verses 1 through verse 10. And there went a man out of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him, that he was a godly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not no longer hide him... She took for him an ark of bulrushes and dabbed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river bank. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew woman, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter and her, said unto her, Take the child away and nurse it for me. I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. And she called his name Moses. 
And she said, Because I drew him out of the water. You know, as we look at this passage of Scripture that talks about Moses' mother, we see that through faith, Moses' mother prepared the future deliverer of the Israelites for, for what was to take place. Now, I want us to consider what we can gain from Jochebed's faith. Jochebed was the mother. The first thing I want us to see this morning is by faith, Jochebed protected her child. You know, the first action we discover in Jochebed's story is that she acted in faith to protect her child from any harm. You know, I think of a story when I think of protection from harm, a story that I once read about a little chicken. A story about a mother hen who had a brood of young chicks, and this hen lived on a farm in the prairies, and one evening looked up to see the sky was full of a, a very strange glow. You see, a spark had ignited a pra prairie fire, and the flames were on their way across the fields, burning everything in their path. Well, the mother hen began to call her chicks to herself, and, and one by one she gathered them under her wings. Just in time, the chicks were gathered in. With a blazing heat, the flames came on, but that mother hen didn't budge. When the morning, the farmer was walking through the farmyard, surveying the damage that had been done by the farmer by the fire that had swept through. He was sure he could hear the sounds of muffled chirps. He listened closely, and there they were. Oh, and there they were again. Those chirps that, that seemed to come from the edge of the field. He pushed something with his foot, and to his surprise found that beneath it were each of the chicks alive and well. The mother had given her life for the same the sake of her young chicks. Her sacrifices reflect the attitude of most mothers for their children. You know, Jacob Ebb is no exception. Scripture tells us that Jacob Ebb was living in, a, in perilous times, a time when the king had ordered that all the male babies born of slaves were to be immediately thrown into the river and drowned. In a desperate attempt, to, to take care of the, the population, or the growth of the Israelites. You know, I wonder how Jacob had felt when she discovered she was going to have a, a baby. You know, who would have a, a child at a time like this? And I imagine she must have prayed that God would let it be a little girl. And can you imagine the sleepless nights she must have had as her do time drew near? But as we read in Scripture and as we see, but when the baby came, it was a little boy, a perfect little boy. And Scripture tells us as she looked upon him and saw that he was beautiful. And you may say, well, well, that's why she wanted to save him. Because he was beautiful. But Scripture tells us more than that. It tells us that she had faith. Faith that this baby was special, a child set apart for a special purpose by God. And as we think of that, in those moments after the birth, she made a perilous decision. She would not let the baby be taken. She would hide the baby. And according to the Bible and what we read, she did this because she feared God. She, she knew who God was. And she feared God more than she feared the pharaohs of Egypt. In fact, as we look in Psalms chapter 139, as we see in verses 13 through 16, it says, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb, and I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that thy my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. You know, many of us are familiar with the words that the psalmist just, that I just read. You know, many of us know that David sets out a case for the fact that from the point of conception, a child is a work of God. 
we see in that passage, and as it says that, who thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Or maybe your translation that you have in front of you says, knits it together in the mother's womb. But have you ever looked at verse 16 before? Because it says that before we were formed, the Lord had fashioned our days for us. In verse 16 of that passage, we see that the fact is that God has a plan for all of us, every one of us, before they are ever born. Another passage of Scripture that comes to mind is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto God, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You know, that's right. We discover in Christ that God has prepared work for us. He has a purpose for each and every one of us. You have a purpose in your life. But do these passages only apply to certain people? I want us to just think for a minute of, of one more passage, and that's Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16, where it says, For by Him were all things created that are in heaven, and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him, and the last two words in that verse, for Him. You know, all things were created through Him and for Him. God doesn't make mistakes. And I hope if you're watching right now and have had a maybe a rough week, or maybe you're just having a time where you're kind of down on yourself, understand that God doesn't make mistakes. That we were created for Him. Everything that is created is created for Him. You know, we shouldn't wonder at the faith of Jacob, who saw that this child had a place in God's plan. You know, we should wonder that, that so many parents fail to grasp the fact that every child has a place in God's plan, that we have been created for Him. And that really, if you think of it that way, we have a serious responsibility towards, towards God for all the children that we bring up or that come into our lives. Because those children become our legacy long after our trophies have faded Long after everybody forgets about our accomplishments and are forgotten, the souls of children will live on. Jacob, by faith, knew that God had a plan and a purpose for her child. She chose to protect her child. You know, how much greater are the stakes in our world today? Where our very culture seeks to devour our children and to pull them away. You know, we live in a time when the popular idea is to give children many times less discipline or less correction. Recent studies, as I was thinking about that, have shown that preschoolers watch more TV and are involved with technology through the week more than any other age group. And as we think of that, a mother needs to have the faith to believe that God has a purpose for every child. We also see that Jacob surrendered her child to God. Please think with me for, for just a moment, if you would. Just take time to think about where Jacob was and, and some questions that, that probably went through her mind. Or maybe that we would ask Jacob if we were there. You know, what were you thinking, Jacob? Did you weep as you wove that little basket? Did you pray as you covered that little ark with pitch? Did you feel hollow from, from just having hopelessness, hoping, not knowing what was going to play, take place? Or was it that you took time to pray? As I think of putting that out to Jacob, and maybe some questions that we would have asked her, have any one of you that are watching or listening been there before? to the edge of hopelessness, the verge of panic, feeling kind of like it's, it's hopeless or, or I don't have any power, it's powerless. Or maybe your heart's broken as your child cries about something 
that you can't fix? Or have you kissed your child goodbye and watched them walk through maybe the kindergarten doors for the first time or, or out of the door for high school or maybe even further than that you helped them pack their car for college or, or maybe they, they moved out of the house for the first time in their life and you've thought to yourself and maybe ask yourself the question who's going to guard my child now? Or maybe right now you're watching and listening and your life's a little different. Maybe it's not worrying at what might happen, but you're sad over what has already occurred. Perhaps over the years your child has turned away from the Lord. Or perhaps there's, there's come a, a morning when they said, I, I'm not going to church anymore, Mom. Or maybe they've turned their back on everybody. Perhaps, and just thinking... Perhaps like you, like Jacob, have found your hands tremble and your eyes blurred with tears. But when you find yourself like Jacob, Ed, follow what she is teaching. Follow what we see in Scripture. When there's nothing to be done, then it's time to let go and to let God. You know, I imagine Jacob Ed spent hours in prayer as she prepared to release her child into God's hands. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23, we read of Jacob's faith. It's a chapter in the Bible that begins with the words, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. But as we look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23, we see by faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. You know, the, rock, the writer in, in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 encouraged those at the edge of hopelessness to do something. In fact, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 say, Trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understandings. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. You know, it's significant that the little basket Jacob had wove for her son is called an ark. In verse 3 of our passage that we read, it says, And when she could not no longer hide him, she took him an ark of bulrushes and dabbed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river bank. You know, the word is used only here. That word ark is only used here and in the story of the deliverance of Noah. Jacob had built an ark for her baby with faith that God would do what she could not. And then she surrendered him into God's hands. As we think of Mother's Day today and I think of moms or those that God has placed people into their lives. You know, moms, each of you will reach the day when you are unable to act. When you're powerless, when you reach that point, when you build an ark of prayer to lay your child in, a place where faith allows you to entrust them to the hands of God. The next thing I want us to see with Jacob is by faith she trained her child. You know, a famous pastor recorded an interesting list of contrasts in the life of Moses. He was the child of a slave, but the son of a queen. He was born in a hut, but lived in a palace. He inherited poverty, but enjoyed unlimited wealth. Moses is a case of a child who went from rags to riches. But the list changes at that point. In Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 through 26, it says this, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ's greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect under the recompense of the reward. And the list continues. He was the leader of armies, but the keeper of flocks. He was the mightiest of warriors, but the meekest of men. 
He was educated in the court, but dwelt in the desert. And he had the wisdom of Egypt, but the faith of a child. He was fitted for the city, but wandered in the wilderness. He was tempted with the pleasures of sin, but endured the hardships of virtue. He was backward in speech, but talked with God. He had the rod of a shepherd, but the power of the infinite. He was a fugitive, but he was a fugitive from Pharaoh, but an ambassador from heaven. He was the giver of the law, but the forerunner of grace. He died alone on Mount Moab, but appeared with Christ in Judea. No man assisted in his funeral, but God buried him. You know, could a mother's hope could a mother hope more for her child when we think of the life of Moses? But what does Moses' choices have to do with his mother's faith? Will you allow me just to think for a minute, or to, can I use the word speculate for a moment? Let's look back at Exodus chapter 2, verses 5 through verse 10. Let me read that. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And where she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women? And she may nurse the child for thee. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take the child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. Imagine a moment when little Miriam burst through the front door with the news that a, that a, prince, a prince had found the baby, or a princess had found the baby and wanted to keep him, but that she would hire Jacob to raise the child for her. What a tremendous answer to prayer. You know, what did Jacob teach Moses in those few years she had with him? What values did she instill? What attitude did she cultivate? What instruction did she give? There have been many studies done recently which have suggested that 50% of a child's attitude is learned in the first three years of life. In fact, many school teachers will tell you that by the time a child is in kindergarten, they have already learned how to act. So what would you teach others if you knew that your time was limited? What attitude would you seek to coach and what values would you instill? What would be important enough to occupy that time? You know, how many opportunities would you let slip by if you knew that day or the day would come when you would surrender the child to someone else? Well, think carefully on that answer. If we are all honest with ourselves, we would realize that the time is limited. That with every passing year, with those God, with those God has placed in our lives, those, those children that God has placed in our lives, or those acquaintances that have come into our lives, as they grow older and grow older and grow older, they grow less teachable. So we need to seize the moment while it lasts. Moses' mother, through faith, prepared the future deliverer of Israel. That's what we saw today. And what would have happened if she had never had the faith to believe that God had a plan for him? What would have happened if she had not had the faith to surrender him to God and to lay him in that tiny little ark? Or what might have happened if she had failed to seize the moment and instilled Moses with knowledge of right and wrong. Moms, if you're watching, and dads as well, and sometimes in a Mother's Day message, dads kind of check out as mothers do on Father's Day, but this is for all of us. Maybe you're a mom 
maybe your dad, maybe your grandmother, grandfather, aunts, uncle, guardian. It's important that we all must realize that those God has placed in our lives are loaned to us by God to be spiritually trained and pre be prepared for His use. You know, it's not enough to provide only materially and physically for them. And sometimes we think, well, I, I have to provide for them this way or that way, and we think total physically. But it's a sobering responsibility as adults, as parents, as guardians, to realize that by training their children for God's use, many lives may eventually be affected by those children. Now that's something for all of us to think about. Whether you are a mother, whether you're a father, whether you're a grandfather, grandmother, uncle, aunt, guardian, whatever you may be, if God has placed children into your life, people are watching, children are watching what you do. Because others can be impacted by our lives and our prayers. Please understand that many times we think no one's watching or no one sees or boy they don't care. They do care. They totally care. And others can be impacted by what they see through us. I'd like to close this morning by just again thinking. Thinking of this area in our lives by faith. We see Jacob at by faith. By faith was willing to raise Moses and trust and have faith in who God was. I pray that in our lives, no matter where we're at, no matter who God places in our lives, that we are ready to allow and have faith and trust in God in all that we do and we, in all that we say by faith. Jacob took some drastic steps for her son Moses. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Holy Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for our time together. And dear Lord, we just pray for this day. We pray for continued guidance and direction in our lives. And we pray, dear Lord, as today uh, is taking place, as we honor mothers and wives. Dear Lord, we just pray for those today that maybe this is the first year without their mother. And they're thinking about all those fond memories. Or maybe they're thinking of a mother that passed away a number of years ago and the responsibility that was placed on their mom or, or on them. We just pray for them today and we think of this Mother's Day, dear Lord, and we just ask for continued guidance. We pray for mothers everywhere, uh, dear Lord, that are influencing the lives of others, children, or, or whoever it may be. Dear Lord, we pray as they look to that, that they understand that they are being watched. And dear Lord, I pray that they are, as all of us should be, a godly influence on those that are placed in our lives. We thank you for this day, and we thank you for the day that we celebrate as Mother's Day. We just pray, dear Lord, for mothers everywhere, wives everywhere, that they would be looking to you for guidance and direction. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to thank you for watching and listening today. And I would just like to say again, Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. Thank you for watching and listening today. And may God bless.